Hey guys, it's Rishi once again. Welcome to our channel where we unlock the secrets of non-verbal reasoning. Get ready to master the art of completing series as we delve into the world of 11 plus preparation. So whether you're a student aiming to ace your exams or a curious learner seeking to enhance your problem solving skills, you've come to the right place. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of series completion and unleash your full potential. So completing the series normally involves finding what comes next, as shown in the example below. But be on your guard. Sometimes we'll ask you to find the figure missing from the middle of a series, or even the end. So if you are working your way through our 11 plus nonverbal reasoning papers, you'll begin to see how we think here. And the more you try something, the easier it gets. So keep on going and you will start to get better and better at doing the quizzes. Without further ado, let's get started. So there is a particular method that we can use, which is known as the SNAPS method. Now I've written it out for you below, just as an acronym, so you can see exactly what areas you need to focus on, whether it's the shape, the number, the angle, the position, the size, or even the shadings. So let's go ahead and dive into this right away. So which one of the figures in the boxes on the right is the missing figure? So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the shape. Well, we know it's a circle, but they are, they are the same. Let's take a look at the number. Do we have an X number of shapes here? No, we just have one shape within the pentagon. And then the angle, is it rotated? Well, it's difficult to tell. What about the position? Yes, we can certainly say that the position works well. If you notice that the circle inside the shape is moving around clockwise, and it looks as if it's one fifth of a turn each time. So by saying that, we know from the top to the lower bottom to the bottom, and we know it's gonna be C, which is going to be the left-hand side. And that there is our answer. So again, please do keep hold of this method as it is key specifically for this topic. If not, you will have it on the screen anyway. And with that in mind, let's dive into this. Question number one. Which one of the figures in the boxes on the right is the missing figure? Righty. So let's dive into this right away. If you see, we have five different circles, then three and then two. So this one will have to be four. Again, let's take a look at the lines that we have here. We have five lines, so one top. Again, we have three tops here and we have two lines. But what's the pattern here? That's got four tops and one line. What can we tell by this? Well, it looks as if the small circles decrease by one. So the series would be five, four, three, two. And one of the five lines has a top line, which is a horizontal. So again, that looks as if it increases every time. As we, we have one line, then three, and then four. So we're now looking for four circles. We know that could be A, C, or D. We're then looking for two horizontal lines at the top of the vertical line. Again, that eliminates A, and we're now left with C and D. So now we're looking for four lines and two hats. And one more thing to consider here is that they all have five lines in total. So that way we can eliminate D because D only has four lines in total. And our answer there is going to be C. As C has five lines, it's got two horizontal lines at the end of the vertical line, and it has four circles. So C is our answer. Marvelous, let's go over to question two. Again, which one of the figures in the boxes on the right is the missing figure? So again, let's take a look at the shapes. Are the shapes different or the same? Or they look the same? Do we have a specific number in this? No, we don't, but we can see that the bottom circles have two and four and then six. 
so it increases by two every time. Rotate this to make this slightly better. And then let's take a look at the angle. Is it rotated? Well, we can see it's being rotated as that's more of a cross symbol and that's an addition symbol and back to the cross symbol. So now we know we are going to have an addition symbol here. So again, we can eliminate C and we can eliminate B because A and D have an addition symbol. And then let's take a look at the size. Does the size of the shape change at all? Nope. And what about the shading? Does the shading or color of the shape change? Well, we know we have certain shadings here, but let's take a look at the image at the back, which currently looks like a maze. So we can see that this, these zigzags alternate from pointing left to pointing right. So we can rule out A in this case, as we can see that the start of the zigzag cannot start on the same zigzag as A. Hence, our answer is going to be D, and that is correct. Marvellous. Okay, let's move over into question three. Which of the figures in the boxes on the right is the missing figure? So again, we'll follow the same approach here, which is our snaps method. So again, are the shapes different or the same? Or even better, can we count how many of each shape we have? So we're looking at number here. And that's what the trick is, to count the lines in the barrel shape. So if we zoom in a little bit, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And then again, we have one, two, three, and one and two. So again, we know that four is what we're looking for, four lines in the barrel. So we can simply eliminate A and the remaining B, C and D all have four lines. So let's go ahead and dive deeper. So the next thing to note here is that we have the position of the black shapes. So then again, does the position of the shape change? Yes, it certainly does. So what we've noticed here that the four shapes rotate clockwise each time. So we know that this club will then move to the right while the diamond will move below. So with that being said, one thing to note here is that the position of this should not change. If the club is upright, then the club remains upright as you can see in the third box. So with that being said, D is the only one that works. It has a solid black diamond in the bottom right and the club in the top right. Okay, let's move over to question four. And remember guys, don't forget, and remember team, don't forget to pause the video at any time, attempt the question when you're ready to go. Okay, question four. So we've been given letters and numbers. So instantly we can count how many of each numbers we have, as well as the position. So if we take a look at the letters, it shows that the letters in each part of the series come in groups of seven. So box D doesn't work as we have more than seven letters. And then again, if we take a look at the repetition, no letter is repeated. So box B can be ruled out as we have Ks that are being rep repeated. And then the numbers at the end of the group of the letters decrease by one each time. So we have nine, eight, seven, and six. So box A can be eliminated as we've got three there. And this leaves us with C, and that is our answer. So once again, we've used the SNAPS method to eliminate all of the letters that were not part of our answer, leaving us with C. So what may be best is if you write this out to ensure that you remember the acronym. But again, practice makes perfect. So let's dive into question number five. Which one of the figures in the boxes on the right is the missing figure? Let's start with S. S for shape. Are the shapes different or the same? Well, there's one thing that has really already caught my attention. And again, you don't have to always go chronologically down from S to N to A to P. If you notice something right away, you can jump at it. For instance, I've noticed that the compass rotates one quarter turn anti-clockwise. So what does that mean? That means that we need north pointing to the top. So as you can see, north was on the right, then the bottom, then the left. So we now need it pointing at the top. 
and boxes A and D work for this rule, so B and C are eliminated. But you should have also noticed the star rotating clockwise each time. So the only position the star could be in is the top right corner. And that means A is our answer. So again, we start at the left corner, we then go to the left bottom, then to the right bottom, and so it only makes sense to put it for the right top. Marvellous. Okay, question six. Again, like I said, you don't need to go in, in order of snaps. If you notice something that is appealing, jump at it right away. So what do we notice about these figures? Well, each figure alternates from a star between two hearts to a heart between two stars. So box C actually changes color. So that cannot be correct at all. We have no colors in this. And B is also eliminated as there are no hearts in that shape. So this leaves us with A and D. And one more thing to notice is that the long rectangle in the middle begins as a whole shape, but gradually changes to two separate three-sided shapes. Again, just to get a bit closer, you can see there's a bit of a gap between the two lines here. But initially, it started off as one entire shape, which was this rectangle here. So what does that mean? That means that D has the complete transformation. Beautiful. Let's now move over to question seven. You're doing really well by coming this far, so let's keep it up. So what do we notice here? Any ideas? Perhaps the H? Is there anything that you can notice about the H? Yeah, so this comes under shading. So does the shading or color of the shape change? It certainly does. So notice how the angled H symbol is shaded differently in every figure. So we need an angled H which does not have dots, which does not have horizontal lines or checks inside it. But also notice that the four-sided shape also rotates one quarter turn each time. So let's go ahead and eliminate A as the four-sided shape does not rotate, even though the angled H symbol is shaded differently. It cannot be B as we have our dots in place and it cannot be C, so that leaves us with D, as both the four-sided shape has rotated, and we've now got vertical lines within the angled H. Beautiful. Okay, question number eight. What do we notice here? So what jumps at you? The shape, the size. As you can see, the sizes of the circles are now decreasing. So again, not only do the number of the circles increase each time, but the size decreases. So let's take a look at the numbers of circles that increase. We start with two, then three, then four, and now we need five of these. But, but again, if we take a look at the right angle triangles, they decrease from four, three, two, and one. So now we can eliminate C directly because we need one right angle triangle, and we can eliminate D because we need five smaller circles as well as A. So our answer is now B. And that is the only one that works. So I hope that you're becoming more confident in this. Keep up the great work and let's now dive in to the last few questions here. So what do we notice about question nine? We've got a series of different shapes. And we can see that the figure has a triangle inside of a square, inside a pentagon and a hexagon. And it almost looks like the biggest shape is taken away each time the changes occur. So we have four shapes at the beginning. It then becomes three shapes and two shapes, which again would be the square and the triangle. So that means our answer is going to be A. So again, keep looking for patterns. Try to time yourself as this will make it easier for you to get the answer quicker. 
Okay, and over to our final question. What do you notice here? What is it about these shapes? Are they changing in any way? Yes, they certainly are. So the shapes inside the boxes change from being one-sided to a one and a three-sided. And then again, from a one-sided and three-sided, we add a five-sided shape. So it looks as if we're following the odd numbers here. So the next one would perhaps be one, three, five, and seven. So again, let's go ahead and write this out. Well, we can instantly eliminate A because that's got a four-sided shape. We can also eliminate D because there's no shadings. And then if we take a look at B, we certainly have our one, five, seven, and three. And that gives us our answer. So B it is. Marvellous work. And that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you for joining us on this journey of non-verbal reasoning mastery. We hope you found our Complete the Series video valuable in your 11 plus preparation. Remember, this was just an initial introduction to this topic. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. I am always open to feedback, so if you'd like me to focus on a specific topic, go ahead and comment below. And keep honing your skills and tackling those series with confidence. Until next time, happy learning!